Imagine discovering a golden helmet but with no eye holes. Could you guess who it belonged to? Let's journey back to Romania in 1928, to a small village where a unique artifact was unearthed. An extraordinary helmet made entirely of gold, but intriguingly it had no eye holes. This peculiarity rules out its practical use in battle. So, who would wear such a helmet? The answer might lie in the ancient Dacian culture. This helmet, with its intricate design and lack of practicality, could have been used in rituals, possibly related to a deity king. One such figure in Dacian mythology is Zalmoxis, a godlike king. Could this golden helmet have been a symbol of his divine power? The truth remains shrouded in the mists of time. A golden helmet for a deity king? A symbol of divine power? Or simply a remarkable artifact with many unanswered questions? What can a stone mask and some fish bones tell us about an ancient civilization? Let's dive in. In 2018, amid the ruins of Palenque in Mexico, archaeologists discovered a stone mask. It's thought to depict the revered Mayan ruler, Pakal, in his old age, but this mask wasn't found alone. Accompanying it were fish bones, a find that intrigued researchers. Why? Because the city of Palenque, where Pakal reigned, was heavily influenced by water. The city's architecture was designed to interact with water and it was central to the Mayans' cosmology. So, could these fish bones hint at a symbolic connection to this crucial element? Could this mask and these bones serve as a testament to the Mayans' reverence for water? These are the questions that keep historians up at night. An artifact that might be a glimpse into the spiritual beliefs of a once great civilization, or yet another mystery waiting to be solved. What if a single artifact could provide a crucial link in understanding an ancient language? Now, let's travel back to Italy, 1964, where the Piri Reis gold tablets were discovered. These are no ordinary tablets, they are bilingual inscribed in both Etruscan and Phoenician, languages spoken thousands of years ago. The tablets are a dedication to the goddess Astarte, providing a fascinating insight into the religious practices of the Etruscans. But they're more than that. They've become instrumental in deciphering the Etruscan language, a language that was once spoken across what is now Italy before the rise of Rome. The tablets highlight the cross-cultural interactions in the Mediterranean during ancient times, serving as a bridge between two civilizations. It's almost like holding a conversation with our ancestors, an artifact that gives us a glimpse into the ancient world or a key to unlocking more mysteries about the Etruscans. Indeed, the Piri Reis gold tablets are both. What if an object found under a tree could tell us about the artistic and cultural exchanges of ancient Europe? Enter the Bronze Matrix of Sarmizegetusa, an artifact that came to light in Romania in the year 2013. Its unique hexagonal structure immediately sets it apart, but it's the intricate carvings of real and mythological animals that truly make it a treasure. From the mighty bear to the legendary griffin, the matrix displays an array of creatures that speak volumes about the rich tapestry of ancient European culture. These carvings suggest a world where reality and mythology intertwined. A world where the bear and the griffin shared the same narrative space. The bronze matrix of Sarmizegetusa is more than just a mold used for casting decorative objects. It's a window into a time long past. A testament to the diversity and dynamism of ancient European culture. Or is it a puzzle still waiting to be solved? What if an artifact could prove that complex cultures existed in Mesoamerica long before the Maya? Now let's dive into the story of the Tuxtla statuette, discovered in Mexico in the early 20th century. This intriguing piece, adorned with an undeciphered script, shakes up our understanding of early Mesoamerican cultures. The script etched into the statuette predates the Maya civilization, suggesting that Mesoamerica was home to complex societies earlier than previously thought. This puzzling artifact continues to challenge experts who strive to decipher its cryptic symbols. The Tuxtla statuette, a silent witness of the past, holds the potential to rewrite history if only we could crack its code. Each curve, each line, each symbol is a piece of an intricate puzzle that could shed light on a world that existed before the rise of the Maya, a culture that has left us so many remarkable artifacts. A glimpse into a pre-Mayan world or a mystery that continues to baffle experts.
What if small statues could shed light on ancient moon worship and its geographical spread? Imagine, if you will, the Golden Heights in 2020, where archaeologists unearthed a collection of petite figurines. These were no ordinary trinkets. They were representations of the Mesopotamian moon god, each one meticulously crafted and brimming with historical significance. Their discovery expands our understanding of ancient moon worship pushing its boundaries beyond Mesopotamia. The fact that these figurines were found in the Golden Heights suggests a possible connection to early Israeli history. Could these figurines reveal that moon worship was more widespread than previously thought? Or perhaps they indicate cultural exchanges in the ancient world that we are yet to fully comprehend. As we delve deeper into the mystery of these figurines, we are reminded that every artifact is a key unlocking doors to the past and challenging our perceptions of ancient cultures. A testament to the widespread practice of moon worship or a puzzle that challenges our understanding of ancient cultures? What if a single helmet could suggest a possible inside job in the Roman conquest of Britain? Now let's talk about the Roman cavalry helmet found in England in 2019. This artifact is more than just a piece of military equipment. It's a potential key to understanding the dynamics of power and politics during the Roman invasion of Britain. The helmet's style and design are unmistakably Roman, but its discovery in England suggests something unexpected. It implies that local Britons may have served as Roman auxiliaries. Yes, you heard it right. This might indicate that the Roman conquest of Britain wasn't solely a foreign invasion. It could have been facilitated from within by Britons themselves. This theory turns our understanding of this historical event on its head, presenting a possible narrative of collaboration or betrayal, depending on your perspective. Evidence of a historical betrayal or a mystery that continues to intrigue historians? What if a bronze plaque could reveal ancient Assyrian spiritual practices and exorcism rituals? Picture this, an artifact dating back 2800 years, hailing from the heart of ancient Assyria. It's not a weapon, not an everyday object, but a plaque intended to ward off the demon Lashu. The Lashu plaque, as it's now known, offers a fascinating glimpse into the spiritual practices of one of history's most powerful empires. The Assyrians, known for their military might and architectural prowess, were also deeply spiritual and their beliefs were intricately woven into their daily lives. This plaque, adorned with intricate inscriptions and symbols, was used as a talisman of protection. Its purpose? To ward off Lashu, a demon in ancient Assyrian lore. The very existence of this plaque is a testament to the Assyrians' belief in the supernatural and their methods of combating it, shedding light on their exorcism rituals. An insight into ancient spiritual practices or a mystery that continues to provoke curiosity. What if children's footprints surrounding clay sculptures could hint at unknown ritualistic activities? This is the question that arises when we delve into the fascinating discovery of the bison of Tukdo Dube. These clay sculptures discovered in France in 1912 are a testament to the creative prowess of our ancestors. However, what truly piques curiosity are the children's footprints surrounding these sculptures. Could these footprints be evidence of some unknown ritualistic activities involving youths? The exact nature of these activities remains shrouded in mystery. Were they part of a ceremonial coming-of-age tradition or perhaps an educational tool in teaching the young about the importance of bison in their lives? It's a fascinating puzzle that continues to intrigue archaeologists and historians alike, a glimpse into the past that offers more questions than answers. Evidence of ancient rituals involving children or a mystery that continues to puzzle experts. Either way, the bison of Tugdodu bear certainly offer a captivating narrative of our shared human history. What if a golden helmet could provide early examples of regal insignia and funerary goods? Now let's travel back to Iraq, about 4600 years ago. Imagine a time when Sumerian kings ruled the land, their authority symbolized through grand regalia. One such item of note is Meskalamduk's war helmet. This golden masterpiece, named after the Sumerian king Meskalamduk, is an intriguing artifact that offers a glimpse into the past. The helmet's intricate design and high-quality craftsmanship are a testament to the advanced metallurgical skills of the Sumerians. It's not just a piece of headgear, it's a symbol of power, authority and prestige. 
While it's named after a king, the helmet's actual ownership remains a subject of debate among historians. Some argue it was a ceremonial piece, used in rituals rather than in battle. Others propose it served as a funerary good intended to accompany the king into the afterlife. A testament to the grandeur of ancient kings or a puzzle that continues to baffle archaeologists? What if a manuscript recovered from smugglers could unlock further historical insights into Hebrew art and culture? This question brings us to an ancient Hebrew manuscript, a remarkable artifact that surfaced in Turkey in the year 2019. Wrapped in layers of history and mystery, this manuscript exudes an aura of intrigue. Its elaborate illustrations and ornate cover are more than just artistic expressions. They are potential keys that could unlock deeper understandings of ancient Hebrew culture. The manuscript's artistic style and the script used provide a window into the aesthetic sensibilities and linguistic nuances of the time. As researchers painstakingly decipher the manuscript, each page turned could reveal a new chapter in the rich tapestry of Hebrew history. However, the manuscript's origins remain shrouded in mystery. Its journey from the ancient Hebrew world to a smuggling operation in Turkey is a story yet to be told. Is it a treasure trove of cultural insights or a mystery that continues to intrigue scholars? What if game pieces could reflect early resource utilization and cultural practices of ancient people? A fascinating question to ponder as we delve into the tale of the whalebone game pieces from Scandinavia. Dating back to the 8th century, these pieces offer a glimpse into the rich cultural tapestry of the ancient Norse people. The game pieces, curiously carved from whalebone, are believed to have been used in Hnefatafel, a popular board game of the era. The use of whalebone, however, hints at more than just a fondness for games. It suggests a large-scale whaling operation, an impressive feat considering the time period. This early resource utilization speaks volumes about the capabilities and resourcefulness of the Norse people. Moreover, the game Hnefatafel itself, often associated with warfare strategy, reflects the cultural practices and societal norms of the time. These game pieces, therefore, serve as a fascinating window into the past. Evidence of ancient whaling operations, or a mystery that continues to perplex historians.